Unresolved lunar mysteries NASA cannot explain. Scientists still have a lot of questions regarding Earth's own moon, despite the fact that it is directly above us and close enough to visit. Science still has unsolved mysteries regarding the moon. Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today, we'll be taking a look at unresolved lunar mysteries NASA cannot explain. Make sure you stick till the end of this video so we have a lot to cover. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video. It helps us a long way. After a three-day voyage from Earth, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong are leading the Apollo 11 lunar module to the surface of the moon. The deep, dark craters, the boulders dotting the alien landscape, and the fine dust that surrounds the spaceship as it ignites its descent engine for landing are all things they comment on as they get closer to their landing place in the Sea of Tranquility. However, when the lander touches down, Aldrin and Armstrong observe something unusual. The surrounding area seems to be rising, but hold on, the spaceship's actually sinking. Like a stone dropped in quicksand, the 15-ton lunar module is being engulfed by the thick coating of moon dust. The disappointment hardly registers in the two astronauts' overworked minds when they become aware that they won't be able to exit the spacecraft. They might never leave the moon if they can't figure out how to get the lander out of the way. In the modern world, the situation would not be considered poor science fiction. While the Apollo program was taking shape in the early 1960s, the subject of whether the moon would swallow a lander was still up for discussion. Today, we know that the moon merely has a veneer of dust covering its essentially hard crust. The worry wasn't cleared up until NASA sent a number of robotic missions to the moon's surface before humanity's great leap. Although lunar research wasn't the main objective of the Apollo 11 mission, the six crewed missions that came after it and the robotic missions that came before it greatly increased our knowledge of the moon. Scientists were able to estimate the moon's age, composition, and formation thanks to the more than 2,000 moon rocks that the Apollo astronauts brought back. With the help of laser reflectors set up on the lunar surface, researchers were able to determine the moon's distance from Earth to within a few millimeters and confirm that it was progressively eroding away. On surface, seismic detectors recorded moonquakes that showed the moon was still geologically alive. After the last human left the moon in 1972, and the last Soviet lander left shortly after, there were still fundamental problems that were unresolved for decades despite Apollo's significant scientific impact. The next time a robot touched the moon's surface was in 1993, when Japan's Hitten lunar probe was purposefully deorbited. The second era of lunar exploration, according to Brett Denevy, a planetary geologist at Johns Hopkins University, began in the late 2000s with the launch of many missions by NASA, China, India, and Japan. In fact, over the previous 10 years, several missions from four different space organizations have successfully landed spacecraft on or near the moon. This includes China's historic first, which came about when it sent a rover to the moon's far side last year. And there has never been a better time to be crazy with NASA getting ready to send humans to the South Pole of the moon. For planetary scientists seeking to learn more about Earth's rocky neighbor, the increase in interest in lunar exploration is fantastic news. They are desperate to learn the answers to these questions. Where did the moon come from? The majority of scientists concur that Earth was struck by a Mars-sized asteroid some 4.5 billion years ago, resulting in a large amount of debris that went into orbit around the planet and finally came together to form a single entity. However, this mystery isn't seen as being resolved. According to Christopher Palma, a teaching professor in Penn State's Department of Astronomy and Astrophysics, even where we think we have the absolute best answers concerning the moon, we are continuously exploring. Why didn't the impact throw the Earth out of its orbit if that's how the moon formed? The difficulty in calculating a scenario in which the massive impactor, which they have named Thea, strikes Earth with a proper amount of force is one of the collision model's most challenging aspects. According to Palma, the collision had to be powerful enough to launch a significant amount of material into orbit around the Earth while remaining below safe limits. Additionally, the Moon's composition is quite similar to that of the Earth, despite the fact that most scientists believe that Thea's debris from the huge collision should have made up the majority of the Moon. For this reason, the Moon can occasionally be seen during the day. Does this imply that the collision theory is incorrect? No, it continues to be the prevailing theory among moon researchers. There could have been several collisions with smaller space objects rather than one major smash between Thea and Earth, or all the materials from both bodies could have gotten messed up in the collision. Other hypotheses are still being researched, such as the hypothesis that the moon was already circling the solar system before it was attracted by Earth's gravity, and that gravity caused material from the solar system's origin to merge into the two bodies, the Earth and the moon, at the same time. 
both raise more questions than the collision theory does. These are the enigmas of our cosmos that science has yet to unravel. Does the moon have water? Yes. Near the moon's south pole, NASA launched a rocket into the KBS crater in 2009. The NASA satellite's instruments captured data as the crash generated a dust plume that ascended about 10 miles beyond the crater's rim. The presence of water ice gains in the cloud provides evidence that there is liquid water in the permanently darkened areas close to the moon's poles. It might be sufficient to support longer-term human moon trips, but we're not talking about lakes or puddles. Palma explains that if we land people there and they can have water ice, they won't need to bring it with them. How did the water end up on the moon? The moon's icy deposits in our own oceans and lakes may have come from comets and asteroids that pounded Earth and the moon during a period when they were both being attacked by comets and asteroids, which contain large amounts of water ice. The moon's interior may have contained water, which was transported to the surface during volcanic eruptions, according to a new estimation of lunar rocks returned from the Apollo 15 and 17 missions in the 1970s. This might have also occurred on Earth. Could life have ever existed on the moon? Scientists are interested in learning more about the moon's hidden ice and polar craters for a variety of reasons, including the possibility that it could provide insight into the origins of life on Earth. According to Palma, one theory for the origin of life is that it is building blocks were transported by comets. Asteroid and comet crashes here may have sent material into space that may have eventually found its way to the moon and have been preserved there, whereas early evidence of life on Earth have been obliterated by weathering and tectonic upheavals. There may be residues of those in the ice on the moon. Why can we only see one side of the moon? The man in the moon never shows Earth his back. We can always see his face. The reason for this is that the moon is tidally locked to the Earth, which means that the amount of time it takes for it to rotate on its axis is equal to the amount of time it takes for it to complete one orbit of the Earth, about 28 days. Scientists explain that this is a result of how the moon's affected by the Earth's gravitational pull, so it's not actually a mystery. Many other planet moon systems exhibit it. Pluto and its moon Charon, which are tidally locked to one another and are regarded as binary planet systems, are one of the greatest examples. They always face one another at the same angle. What is a lunar lava tube? A tunnel on the moon that's 30 miles long and 60 miles broad has recently been discovered by a Japanese probe employing a radar device that can analyze subsurface topography. According to scientists, it was created by volcanic activity at least 3 billion years ago when a stream of streaming lava hardened into an outer crust while the molten rock continued to flow into the inside. Space organizations are hopeful that these underground tunnels might make suitable places for manned space flights and might even be supplies of water for astronauts after NASA discovered a number of small pits on the surface of the moon that may be openings to similar tubes. And that ends our episode for today. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below your own thoughts. And don't forget to like today's video. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.